So last week, our friend Jason, no, not that Jason, from the Bug Ranch, went down to Skycraft, one of our favorite stores here in the Orlando area, and picked up this oscilloscope kit. It's a DSO build-it-yourself oscilloscope. Uh, he found out that the kit actually cost about $60 or $50 if Jordan builds it. So he stopped by the house this week and dropped it off and said, hey, here, you get to build an oscilloscope. Also included a variable frequency W. Uh, I'm not sure what this is yet. We're going to open this up as well, and we're going to take a look. I imagine it's, uh, we could see a frequency and duty cycle. I imagine it's going to be some sort of square wave generator. Uh, let's, let's build an oscilloscope, DSO, <laughs> for 50 bucks and see what we get. Let's get started. I went online and found out this is actually called the DSL 150 and I feel bad too because I found it online for about $16 assembled. I also found what he really needed is actually something more like this with a built-in battery and much more options that he could use uh, for automotive related test applications. And in this bag we get, let's see, another bag with, um, I see some, some circuit boards, we'll, we'll open this up separately, a, a plastic case. And in this plastic case, another plastic case, and uh, we have some surface mount components in here. Very nice. I'll put that over here. And not a probe, but some alligator clips to a BNC connector. There we go. We have on here two boards. This one has a screen. We can see here the screen's got a protective covering on it, so we'll leave it like that. Okay, these are the assembly instructions right here. Okay, there we go. I can't make this stuff up, but there's a uh, first time for everything. Step one, apply power. So I'm going to uh, apply 9 volts, positive center pin, set up a power supply, and we're going to apply some power in our first step of this device and see what we get. The center positive, negative is... It should have been a flash. I'm gonna have to look again, because I missed it. Yep, there it goes. There it goes. So it looks like, <laughs> it looks like an oscilloscope of some sort. Okay, it works. Step two, I'm gonna unpack all these goodies. Let me see what we got. I imagine there's gonna be a lot of surface mount work at this point. And bend these tabs on 90 degrees. It's acting as a heat sink. That one was a little more work because it was acting as a heat sink, but I was able to flip it over and work on it with gravity and then able to get it in without touching it with anything else to disperse the heat and then it worked just fine. It instructs me specifically to remove resistor R30 right here. So I'm gonna heat up the pad and pull that resistor off. Make sure the pad is not shorted in any way. Here it is right there. Resistor 30, quick inspection, shows clean break. We check the operation of the unit again. I've already switched the power switch on. I've tested the power switch. I apply power and they want us to check the buttons. I let it boot. I can see all that is working. Buttons seem to be good. I'll move on to the next step. Also, I'll point out on this kit, all of those tiny SMD resistors and capacitors have already been soldered onto this board from the factory. So there's no need to do that. It's already been done. Nothing to do. We'll move right on to uh, step three.
This analog board is now finished. We'll move on to the next board. This board is but a single component. It's so now time to fit the LCD panel to the housing. We flip the board over. I have a feeling I'm probably going to have to remove that protective layer before I do. Because it can be caught behind there. So I'll do that now. I'll remove this adhesive protection. This board with the rotary switch will actually go through this hole and mount through here and I will solder these four pins through like this. Two screws will secure this board into the uh, plastic housing. There's a requirement on step four to test some voltages temporarily connecting these boards, so I'll just go through them. Uh, V1, 2, and 3 is supposed to be zero. So we see 1, 2, 3 is zero. 4 sits at about 1.65 volts. And this is about 1.8. My voltage is about 10 volts. Input's uh, supposed to be around 9.3. It does say voltage dependent, so mine's going to run just a little bit hot. AV negative should be around neg 5, but plus or minus 2%. Mine's going to be a little hotter. So we see neg 5, 4. It's about fine. V minus is voltage dependent. It's in about 8.8. .8. V plus 8.35. Mine's just over 9, like I said. 9.3. So the voltage is good, we'll move on to the next step. The next step is a calibration of two screws. They're set behind here, so they, it can't be done after the unit's assembled. So again, these boards need to be pressed together by hand. I have went and connected the alligator clip to the test probe to get a square wave. And now I'm gonna be reading the instructions right quick to see how these uh, capacitors over here are gonna need to be adjusted. It's probably gonna be for an optimum square wave, but I'm gonna take a look and see what's going on. I'll work on C3 first, see what I get out of this. And I do see the bottom of the waveform is affected by adjusting the pot, so I'm just going to do it to straighten that waveform. Okay, it looks about right. It's about as close as we're going to get on this thing. Let's put everything together now in this plastic case. And we assemble the analog board into the back cover now. I'm going to slide this piece through like that. Goes into these grooves. It sits here and then we're gonna secure it with four screws. So now this test pin hanging off the end goes through this little slot while this connector down here and this connector over here connect to each other. I slide that in and then I bring this across here. Line those pins up so I don't bend them. There we go. And then I just push this down like that. Everything's sitting in position so it appears. Yeah, it looks okay. And this bottom bracket goes over the power switch into the slot. Just like that. And finally, this bezel goes over everything. Or at least that's the plan. And this side's working. See if this side will cooperate. It's an almost fit. There it goes. Not a snap fit, it's more of a more of a crunch fit. And there are screws that go through to secure the bezel to the back of the unit. And finally the knob. Let's see if this fits. As good as you would expect it to. It does have the basic functions of an oscilloscope. You could see that. If you're on the different selector, like this is the volts per division, I can make it bigger or smaller. I think you could adjust the granularity of this too, but I'm not going to get too far into that. You can see I'm also moving the waveform up and down. Division adjustment, as we see here, <laughs> it does some funky things, but I have a function that I've turned on here that shows the uh, information, uh, the measurements, if you would, in the background. And I've hooked this to my function generator. There's a test point here for one kilohertz square wave that I did use before in a setup. It's not very interesting, obviously. But I'm set up for uh, one kilohertz, 50% duty cycle, uh, one volt sine wave. 
right? I think that's important because I am seeing 1.07 peak to peak frequency is sitting in and around one kilohertz at 50% duty cycle. So I have a basis for which I can take a look at some waveforms here and see what we got going on. I'm not really good with this UI, so I'm a little bit slow. And I can shut this off for a better view, but I will keep referring back to it as I go into the different waveforms. So we do have the sine wave, and I'll, I'll point out here's the trigger. If I set it for normal, we can see this little blue uh, dot on the right here sets, sets the trigger. We can see that wave uh, oscillate very slowly back and forth for that, for that trigger. Point. Not a whole lot of triggering function, but gives you something to work with, right? So I'm just going to set it here in the middle, trigger be done with it for now, move it as needed. So I'm going to move to a different wave. Let's see what we got. Square wave. This is one I set up as best I could. I think that's okay for this thing. The trigger is a little tweaky on this. The triangle. Use some of the uh, random waveforms I'm going through, that's all. Really slows down when you get into the weeds, that's for sure. This looks like a modulated signal right here. And we're back to sign. I wonder what amplitude modulator looks like on this. We're going to set that up just to have a look. I'm curious. And because I know Jason's going to ask if this thing can be used to uh, test an AM transmitter. We're just going to sweep through the unmodulated portion here. Just so we'll turn on modulation. There we go. Look at that. I realize I'm adjusting the uh, generator for the scope, but the uh, oscilloscope isn't very precise, so if you get it just right, it seems to... So that's it. Way too much for way too little, but at least it was a fun build. I hope you enjoyed this video on the uh, no-name 1 megahertz. Practically useless oscilloscope that has no built-in battery, so you have to lug around a 9-volt power supply with it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?